So I've wanted to do a series about programming locomotive decoders for some time. Uh, the great difficulty is to do that and keep it interesting. <laughs> it's a huge subject um, and a lot of it no one really needs to know. It's a little bit like the engine management system in your car. You just want to drive the car. You don't need to think what's going on under the bonnet. So I'm going to break this down into some of the more important uh, configurable variables, the, the CVs. And think of the CVs as little index cards where information is stored about how the locomotive is going to perform. Great starting point on this exploration is always going to be the decoder manual. It does contain a lot of information and again there is a danger of going too in depth. Just why I wanted to break this down into specific uh, configurable variables uh, rather than going through one to well, potentially 1048. We're just going to look at the ones that are significant um, in the DCC language. So things that control the address of the locomotive, uh, things that control the performance of the locomotive. And then later on I may look at some of the, the more um, functional aspects. But I think it's a great starting point to look at the addressing. So that's what we're going to do in this film. So DCC has evolved. So it started off that you could only program a few features like the basic address and the a maximum and minimum speeds of the loco. We'll start with the basic address. I've got a locomotive here, Trix Loco, that I've just put a silver 21 decoder in and put it on the programming track. And there is a shortcut there that says Loco Address, and then you've got another one that says CV. So we're going to go into CV number one, and CV one is what they call the basic address of the decoder. Read it. Come up with the factory setting of three. Um, decimal value. Uh, there's two ways of handling the uh, CVs. It's the decimal and then there's the bits. For the majority of CVs, the decimal is so much easier to understand. So three directly relates to the address. Let's clear that. It's a class 44 and we'll give it a two digit basic address of 44. So when DCC started the maximum addresses that you could give were 99. So the basic address was set up with that in mind. <laughs> then all we've done is give the loco an address of 44 now. CV1, really straightforward, just put in the two digit address that you want to use. Now, you can use four digit addressing and CVs are limited because the maximum value you can put into an individual CV is 255. So when you go to four digit addressing, the system has a cheat. Um, what it does is it stores the information in CV 17 and CV 18 and in CV 29, it tells the locomotive decoder that it's going to be using this extended address. 
Thankfully, most digital systems have a shortcut, so if we go into programming, um, rotate round, local address, just going to read, I've got my 44 that I had in there originally. I want to put in a four digit address which relates to the cab number 1667 on this locomotive and write it. So now the locomotive is on 1667. So we've cheated to do that. Uh, we can actually look at the individual CVs involved in that process. To get the long address, the system actually does a calculation. So CV 17. Um, tells the system which group of addresses it is and each group is split into 255 addresses so you've got 0 to 255, 256 to 511 and then so on and so forth until you cover the 999 addresses so My value of 1667 fits in this group here, so CV17, we plug in 198. And then we need to calculate the difference, so that block starts at 1536. So my address on the calculator, 1667 minus 1536 equals 131 and the 131 drops into CV18 so we can just confirm that's exactly what's happened on the programming track oops wrong button right programming CV17 is 198 from the table and CV18 131. So there's no direct correlation, you need to calculate it using the table and the difference. And the third factor to long addressing is CV29. And I'm going to do a separate film on CV29 because it's kind of a pivotal one. It tells the locomotive decoder how to behave. So decimal value is 46, but the one we really want to look at is the bit value. So each CV is divided into eight bits and each of those bits switches on a different thing in CV29. Bit 6, in this case, tells the loco um, to use the long address. I've just done it off, so if I write that, transfer the loco back to the track. We'll find not running on the long address. I go back to 44 which I programmed as the short address. It's back on the short address. Thankfully your system works that all out for itself so um, you don't have to. But I'll explain CV29 in a separate film because I think it has some um, very useful factors in it. A 
I'm now going to have a look at CV19. It's one of the more obscure address uh, functions on a decoder. A lot of systems now bypass it, um, but it's a, an old one and if your system doesn't have uh, multi-traction it's a useful one to understand. So I've got two locos on the track. Address 44 there at the front. And number 42 at the back there. So they're, they're currently driving on those two separate addresses. What I'm going to do is change CV19 on both of them. And I'm going to put it to um, okay that put it to four on both of them. So I need to go to the other loco now. Lock menu programming on main CV nineteen clear value four. And right, escape out of that. So number 44 now isn't driving on 44. And number 42 isn't either. Although we can control the lights. <laughs> so what I've done is put them into a multi-traction on address four. And both locos will drive on that address. So buried away in an old CV is a, a nice little trick. To break the multi-traction we then have to do the reverse, so you can do this on the programming track as well, I've just done it programming on main to oops, speed it up, so we need to go to the individual local addresses when we're doing it on programming on main. CV19 and I want to put that back to zero which will turn off that multi-traction address on that loco. I have to do the same for the other loco. So we go to the stack, go to address 42. Turn that back down to zero. So now, My locos are separated again. So that was a quick look at the um, decoder address settings. CV1, uh, 17, 18, 19, and very briefly about 29. I think I need to describe that more fully in a separate film.